In November 2009, former President Obama launched a highly anticipated campaign called Educate to Innovate. A nationwide effort includes over $260 million in public-private investments to move American students to the top of the pack in science and math achievement over the next decade, envisioning America as a new superpower in STEM. Fernanda Villafana, a senior at Williamsfield High School, is benefiting from the initiative, like many others from the STEM field. She is a problem solver, a hard worker, and a leader. There is only one thing that she is not. She is a girl, not a boy. My name is Fernanda Villafana, and I'm the president of robotics. Girls are participating in STEM fields more than ever. First, an organization that promotes STEM to K-12 students since 1989 have partnered up with tech companies like Apple to inspire boys' and girls' interest in STEM through robotic competitions. Our team made a t-shirt cannon, and they brought it to like the STEM Fest, and I was like, wow, they can drive that thing. And so I was like, wow, that's really cool. I want to learn how to do that. You can be an engineer, you can do whatever you want. Um, it's really inspiring and it makes me as a girl feel good being on the robotics team. Programs like FIRST allow girls to explore their interest in STEM. STEM for Girls is also making its way into our educational institutions. Schools like Chaparral Elementary are bringing STEM to girls in their early age. So one of the things we're trying to do here at the elementary level to make STEM more identifiable to everybody is we're starting in the kindergarten grades with STEM activities and we're building STEM projects with young learners and letting girls and boys engineer and design together from a very early age. We do try to encourage girls as much as possible. My favorite thing about robotics is just like building the robot. I really like the technology and engineering stuff. Some things that I think girls are good at is pretty much anything. All these efforts display a promising future. According to the U.S. Department of Education, there is a 54% increase in bachelor's degrees awarded in engineering and computer science to women from 2011 to 2016, with the government's tech industries and educational institution support. Achieving gender equality in STEM seems just around the corner. It's greater access to STEM and computer science programs will ensure that our children can develop the skills they need to compete and to win in the workforce of tomorrow. Who likes to win? <laughs> Anybody like to lose? I don't think so. No one likes to lose, and yet women are losing. When you look at the next columns on the same data provided by the U.S. Department of Education through a bigger picture, it tells a very different story. Here are the percentages of females earning degrees in engineering and computer science, and it remained relatively unchanged over the last 10 years. Women have been facing an invisible barrier despite all the visible investments in STEM. They would probably ask one of the male guys who's involved rather than the female because they assume that I didn't really know as much. And then they'd be pretty surprised when I found out that I'm actually project manager of the team. When I first walked into the first robotics meeting, they thought that I was just some typical girl who like didn't want to get myself dirty or anything. So they immediately put me on a social media fundraising team. What you're doing can be taken over uh, on the robot and just to like help you, I guess. And when it came down to, I wanted to do the big machining because I had learned what electrical had taught me, um, they didn't want me. They wanted me to do like the cleaning or they wanted me, that that's not my job. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be part of that. I guess during that time that I was a computer programming major and deciding that battling individual men wasn't my thing, I decided to take on the battle of becoming an enlisted for the Army. And that battle was a much easier battle for me to take on. Even more so, there is still a notable gender gap in most STEM fields, particularly in engineering and computer science. These numbers show more than just a gender equality issue, but an erroneous belief that shapes the engineering culture. Well, it's not just a matter of more women in engineering, it's a matter of dealing with the ways in which women are marginalized. This is Carol Surin, a professor emerita of criminology, law, and society at UC Irvine. Her research, I Am Not a Feminist But, Hegemony of a Meritocratic Ideology in the Limits of Critique Among Women in Engineering, highlights the invisible force within the STEM in engineering culture that limits women to achieve equality. Well, the purpose of the study was uh, to try and understand why women are underrepresented in STEM fields in general, and engineering in particular. 
In her research, she emphasized the paradox women in engineering faced, meritocracy and individualism, the core values of American engineering. That is, is that you succeed or fail on your own abilities and that there's nothing else that's going on. It's a pure meritocracy and those who can cut the mustard make it. The heart of meritocracy is this huge emphasis on individualism. I, I did it on my own, you know, I am successful or a failure on my own merit, individualized merits. Engineering has been particularly unwilling, I guess, to look in its own house and see the ways in which its emphasis on meritocracy um, is of a piece with reproducing the, those very inequalities, gender inequalities. By blindly promoting meritocracy and individualism without reflecting on its impact, STEM fields became resisted to mobilization for structural change. And instead of addressing the structural issues within the engineering culture, women engineers tend to accept their underrepresentation than to question engineering's meritocratic claims. Even the support groups, you know, that students go to, like women in engineering, the organizations, all focus on teaching the women how to cope with the culture individually rather than thinking through the ways in which they might act more collectively as, you know, take collective action to challenge the status quo. Embedded with the meritocratic and individualistic ideology, women in STEM are chained into an unfair position. The women who doubt the fairness of engineering's meritocracy will be labeled as a traitor of their profession. As a result, rather than resisting hegemonic meritocracy, these brilliant young women engineers are its active promoters. Women in STEM unconsciously building up their own barrier, preventing STEM's advancement in gender equality and diversity. Recognizing the real issue is the first step towards solving the problem. We can start with bringing political changes into the STEM fields and redirecting the investments to reshape the STEM cultures. While women are in the center of the reformation for gender equality, Bringing men into this conversation will accelerate the changes. You know, it's not its not just a woman's issue um, around work-family balance, that it's not just a woman's issue about how children are raised. Uh, it's, a, it's a family issue and, you know, young men have to see that as much as a part of their identity as young women and take action to take steps that demonstrate that. Solving the structural problem in STEM is not an easy task, and yet it is the most important one. The future of STEM is the future of America. By working collectively to unravel the structural barriers, girls like Fernanda will have a chance to innovate the next decade.